Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So this is a relatively simple topic, but it's an important one. And it is, of course, as you can see, about the spear and shield. Now, I'm specifically using here a Norman style shield, but I could be using any period shield. I could be going back into antiquity, could be going back into the Bronze Age. And indeed, I could be coming all the way forwards to the 19th century. The fact is that the spear and the shield used together are pretty much the most common weapon set used in close combat throughout the entire of human history. Um, found all over the world, whether we go to South America, whether we go to Asia, um, obviously Europe, wherever, Africa um, and across the millennia. Now, um, I'm aware that there have been some videos recently concerning the use of the um, spear and the shield together. Now, this, this is a huge topic and it's something that I'm definitely going to be dealing more with in future videos. But there's one topic, uh, there's one particular part of the topic, which I think that I need to mention um, before I do the other videos. Um, and I'm not specifically here going to be talking about holding the spear point up or point down. Okay, that's not really specifically what this video is about. What this video is actually about is distance. Okay, now if I just ditch the shield for a minute. Um, in many previous videos I have made the true and important point that if you were facing a person with a spear or a bayonet or any type of long pole weapon essentially, with something like a sword or axe or mace or whatever, then you're at a distinct disadvantage if you are both unarmoured and if you both have a single weapon. And that's basically true. The, the reach advantage, the leverage advantage, the fact that you can move from high to low or left to right with a minimum movement at the back of the lever is fundamentally very, very important. But as I've mentioned in many videos, when you bring armour or shields into the equation, it changes a lot. Equally, of course, we have to look at different aspects of this topic if we're talking about a similar weapon set against a similar weapon set. So if we just throw the topic of uh, swords and axes out of the door for a minute and just consider the shield, uh, just consider the spear with the shield. So if both sets of people or both groups of people have a spear and a shield, then the considerations become somewhat uh, different now, a different set of uh, primary concerns. So if we've assumed that both sides of people have decided that this is the best weapon set for them to have, why would shields be pretty much always carried throughout history? Because of missile weapons. If you don't have shields of some kind, and assuming you don't have armour, um, certainly if you don't have really comprehensive plate armour that we don't really see until the late medieval period, then the shield is the best way of protecting yourself against missile weapons such as arrows and javelins and slings. Okay, so assuming everybody's got shields and now assuming that they choose to take spears as their primary weapon. Yes indeed some people uh, like the Romans you could argue did have the sword accompanying the shield for various reasons. Again I'll, I have looked at it in previous videos and I will look at it in future ones but most people throughout history have chosen the spear. Now there are a number of um, obvious factors about the spear that make it prefer preferable to a sword. Um, one being that you can throw it and one being that it's got much longer reach. Okay? Some people would argue that it's uh, cheaper to manufacture um, and that is fundamentally true, although you will notice throughout history many people who carried spears as their primary weapon also had a sword. So the economic factor kind of gets, just gets thrown out and can be ignored because if you've already got a sword, well then clearly the reason for using a spear as your primary weapon isn't anything to do with economics. So assuming this is my primary weapon, um, th this weapon set, shall we say, the spear and the shield are my primary weapons. Now, there is a question of distance here, which is the main topic of this video and what I want you to really uh, think about. Um, now, we often talk about, as I've mentioned, fighting against people with shorter reaches, okay, shorter reach weapons. And if you've got a spear, clearly you can, you can outreach them regardless of how you're holding that spear. Okay? And yes, you could argue that one grip might have slightly longer reach than the other one, but we're not going to consider that here. Okay? Where things get a little bit more complicated is if both people have weapons of the same reach. Okay? So let's assume that both sets of people have a spear and a shield. Okay? We are now neutralised in terms of reach. But there is a problem 
um, that comes with spears, and that is that unlike um, swords or uh, knives, things like this, they can't be used in extreme close range. And this is a distance at which we might often come in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but even more likely come uh, in encounter in a group fight, whether it's a skirmish or it's a full-scale battle. So if we're fighting with people and people come pretty much up to shield distance, shield to shield distance, okay, at that distance it becomes quite difficult to use our spear because our spear is very good at hitting someone over there, okay, at that reach, much further than my shield, but it's not very good at hitting someone who's right here, okay. Even worse, and this is a topic again I will cover in a later video talking about grips of the spear, uh, even even less the situation, I would argue, if you hold it in this grip, okay? Uh, so arguably, you'll be able to get someone closer if you're holding it in the, should we say, the throwing grip or the point down grip um, than the other way around. Um, but it is a problem with spears, and it could be argued that it's one of the main reasons, actually, why spearmen, whenever it was possible, were also equipped with some form of sword or dagger. Um, because if the fight does come to that range, it might be that if my opponent has come right up against my shield, there is a point at which I'm coming over the top of their shield and trying to get them. I might be trying to come around the sides as well. There is a point at which it might become better to drop the shield and go straight for the sword and start coming in with the sword. Okay? So, there definitely, as I've made the point many times in the past, there are definitely contexts in which a sword is a better weapon than a spear, and one of those would be in a confined space. But remember that a confined space or confined distance doesn't always have to happen inside a building or in woods or whatever. It can be just simply in the fight, when the fight comes co so close that you can't use the spear anymore. Now, when we're talking about group fighting, there is one final factor which you have to consider. And that is there is a way of maintaining distance from the opponents um, and keeping them at spear stabbing distance by virtue of the fact that you're in a group. So whilst I might not be able to hit the person directly in front of me here very easily with something as long as a spear because it might be too unwieldy, I can probably, my buddy who's standing over there along the line, so imagine you're standing over there along the line, so I'm fighting the opponents here, if I notice they're fighting someone very close over there, I can defend myself from this person in front of me here or rely on one of my comrades over there. I can hit that person in the face over there. So this is very important because it does mean that whilst my spear might be impotent against the person in front of me, it might still be very useful against the people over there. So I might rely on uh, the person in front of me being hit and wounded and being attacked by the people to my right and the people to my left, rather than necessarily me. So I'm going to wrap up there, but really, just to summarise, the spear is an awesome, awesome weapon and has been used predominantly you know, throughout history as the, the predominant close combat weapon set. But it does come into problems when you come into close combat, um, and that is definitely one of the reasons why spearmen usually carried an even shorter close combat weapon as a backup. Um, but if you're fighting in a group and you come very close, your spear might still be useful by virtue of attacking other people who aren't the people directly in front of you. Okay? Um, the person in front of you here, you might have to rely on your comrades to take care of them. I hope that's been thought provoking and somewhat interesting. Give me a like and a subscribe and I'll see you really soon back on Scholar Gladiatoria channel. Um, and take care folks, cheers. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.